Good morning. Today I'm playing with my clay. I have I just ordered some air ferns and uh, these little guys here. I ordered about 20 of them and I have them all over my wall in little wall pockets and uh, I've been making wall pockets out of clay for them and I just love them. This little one I made a while back. And it's very rough and crude, and I like that. Um, but as you can see, you don't need much of a pocket to put one of these in it, and they look so adorable. And I want to hang some over my coffee bar in the kitchen. And um, so I decided to do some more out of clay. And I started this morning playing with the idea of animals. And I still have work to do on this one. He needs a lot of smoothing. He's only partially dry. And I let him dry a little and then I work some more on him. And then I let him dry a little and then I work some more. I try not to get him too wet. But the, the water helps you smooth it out. But I worked on him this morning. And once it's totally 100% dry, I'll go back and I'll do, I'll do some carving. Because you can carve into this. Now this is air dry clay. This is DOS. I'll show you the package. I've only got half a package left of this red clay because I just got right into it. Absolutely love it. But you keep, I keep it in double plastic bag because I left these little bits out here. And sure enough, they're almost totally dry. But I can break them up and make a slurry out of them. Slurry is just like wet clay that you can use to stick your pieces together. But this is what it is. It's DOS modeling clay, and it's an air dry clay, and it just works wonderfully. Now, what I'm going to start with, and you can just use regular tools. I I use a lot of like kitchen knives and different things like that for it. Um, these little plastic tools that you get with Sculpey or um, Play-Doh are perfect to to use with it. You don't need special. You don't need special tools for it. Now what I start with, I'm going to make, see this one came out a little too big. I can probably fit two plants in there, but I want little individual ones like, like this one. So I think I'm going to, I started with some paper towel that I rolled into a ball, flattened on one side and just covered with uh, aluminum foil. And that's what's going to make the pocket part of it. I think I'm just going to make little animal faces or little faces. I don't know if they're going to turn out to be animal faces, but we'll roll out a little bit of it. So I don't need my, I have this section from what, what I just, when I did the fish earlier. And, I, and like I said, you got to keep it packaged up good. Um, I keep it in a plastic, in a small plastic bag and in, in a bigger plastic bag with a wet, paper or damp paper towel in between the two and that keeps it nice and moist so I'm going to cut some off of here and this is my just kitcheny knife and you have to have a little I have a little cup of water with a sponge to help with the working but you really don't need fancy tools to put the hole in them you can use a pencil I have hole cutters but I find I don't use the fancy tools very much. Uh, like I had bought this one. I don't know how long ago. It's a clay extruder. Never used it. Might turn around and resell it. But I'm going to cut a piece of this off. There we go. That's probably way too big. I'll probably do two at once. Make sure I... Put this in its little baggie. And then inside it, big baggie. And as you can see, the big baggie has just a little wad of paper towel that I dampen. Keep the air in there nice and moist. Alright, so I made a couple of these little... I was thinking maybe little faces. So 
Now, what I'm using for work surface, this is actually a sewing mat uh, for when you're doing free um, motion quilting, it, so things slide across it. I, I bought, I think, a pack of three of them, and I use them for crafting. I've got this one that I use for crafting. The others I save for sewing, but... And I just cut up some old fabric, and as you can see, let me move my fish back over here. This is what I put them on when I'm done and waiting for them to dry. I put them on a piece of fabric, just lay it over the top, and that way I can slide them around and they're not on a board or anything like that. So they're easier to move. Now I've got my roller here. Now I also use the fabric when I'm rolling them out. I'm going to clean the clay off of this and dry it. You want your tools clean. So I keep paper towels close by, I keep the water close by. Now, I start just gently rolling it a little bit so that I can get a part to work in my hand. Because what I'm gonna try and do, pushing it with my hand, trying to push it down and make sure there's no air bubbles in it. Now you can knead the clay like you do regular clay, but I, I haven't bothered with this, and I've, I never get bubbles, so, or I haven't yet. Knock wood. Put a little something in my clay there. Okay, let me lean forward here so I'm more in view. Yeah, there's something a little white. Looks like it might be a piece of paper towel stuck in the clay. And my mat's wanting to move. But it is a skid mat. It's supposed to move. I usually don't have the tablecloth under. I usually have it taped down to the table, but I'm not working on the kitchen table. I'm working on my sewing table. So. And I'm just going back and forth. The thickness that I want is probably the thickness like of this handle here. About that thick, so I've got a ways to go. And I've got this piece from earlier, and you can see, because I kept it in that bag with the moisture, still nice and usable. Now, what I do when I get to this point where it's almost where I want it, is I'll take one of these cloths and put it over the top, because I like the texture of the cloth. It's not a, uh, like burlap or anything. It's not a heavy texture. And this is an acrylic roller, but you can actually just use a rolling pin. I just wouldn't use one that I was going to use on food later. But you can always pick up cheap rolling pins. I bet they sell it at the dollar store. Or at, at um thrift store. All right, it's almost the same thickness whoops see what happens when it's wet when, it, when you get a wet spot on here okay so I'm going to I need a back for it as you can see the um the wall pockets have a pocket that goes up in the front and then a flat thing I'm going to do animal. This is going to be like the top of the head, so it's not going to be that big in the back. A little bit bigger, but not that big. So, let's cut this in half and see if we get enough for two. And once again, I'm cleaning off my knife. I don't want any nasties on my clay. I really enjoy doing this. All right, we'll use this for the back for now. Yeah, see, that's still a little thick, thicker than I want it. Let me see. It's just a little bit thicker than I want it, so I'm using the knife as a gauge. My 
hear the storm outside. I love working on art when it's storming outside. It's something. Something just feels right. Now you can if you're worried about getting the, the same thickness all the way around. I'm just like leaning it towards the knife and doing it. But you can take popsicle sticks and um, stack them up and tape them together like three three sticks would probably be the right thickness. Now, if that helps you put it on either side. Put three sticks on either side and that would work. Okay. Now let's find the perfect hip size. I don't know what animal we're doing. What I have in mind is the ears are going to come out of the back part. That's what I have in mind. Let me see. And this is another regular clay tool. Just want to clean it off a little bit. All right, so. And I could probably go even a tiny bit thinner with that. Let's use the little over the bush. There. Now, I'm just marking it right now because this is where I'm going to score it. Now, this top part here, let me get this more in focus. Here. Pull this down. It's easier to pull the camera down than to. All right, this top part here is going to be open. So I'm just basically going to be draping the part that's going to be the face. Well, let me go get that phone. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. Now, so I'm going to turn this upside down and just make a mark where I think. Let's cut it straight across. Well, straight. Hear that storm out there? Come down. Let's see. We'll put this as the... And come out to the ears. I don't know what this is. It might be a cat. I don't know. It might be. We'll see when we get done what it is. Not really aiming towards anything recognizable. I hope that storm doesn't get too loud now that I've got all my clay stuff out. All right, now I'm just basically forming it. I'm going to come around here. Come around here. That's just the basic form right there. Now, I'm going to take a minute to clean it up a bit. And how I'm going to do that is just with my fingers pressing it in. And I'm going to wet my finger. Pinch. I have a delivery coming today. I hope he doesn't have to come out in this awful... It's pouring out there now. And you can take the sponge and do it if you don't like using your finger. Now, my fingernails are sharp, so I have to... But you just don't want to put too much water on it. Now, you can be more precise in your cutting, and you can even use cookie cutters. I don't have any cat head cookie cutters, or I'd be using them. All right. And I'm not worried about the back, and I will, you know, sign it later on the back, put my name. Okay. Now it's time to put it down on a piece of cloth. All right. Now I'm just going to smooth it more. Now you can use these things for smoothing. Or 
okay. You can use your fingers if you want. Can you hear that storm? I may have to stop. The lights go out. Used to be, our lights would go out every time it stormed. And we're on a, the kind of grid, well, this is Texas. We're not even on any kind of decent grid, of course. But the neighbor's lights would stay on across the street. Our side of the street, the lights would all go out. Because we were on a different transformer and it was an old crappy one. It doesn't do that anymore. But the lights will blink a lot. Okay. Now, you don't worry about in here where you're going to have the... And I'm not going to aim for a realistic cat. Okay. So, now that's going to be the backboard. I do have some clay over here dampening up. In fact, I can put some of the new stuff in it to make some nice slurry. But what you can do is make like a snake. Yeah. I need it as, as long as this little U thing is here. So I'm going to roll it on the table. And I'm going to make a bunch of these today. I just figured I'd do one on camera. All right, now we need the kitty's face. Let's thin this out a little. keep going off the screen. I am terrible videographer. I'm telling you that right now. And I apologize to you. I'm trying to learn how to do, because I do, um, I sell on eBay and Etsy. And I do a lot of it from thrift shops and estate sales and garage sales. And I'm trying to learn how to tape those. Okay, this has to go side to side a little bit bigger. Because you can see right now it's the same size, but it needs to be bigger so that I can puff it up. And it's kind of thick. So I'm going to go side to side and thin it out. Then side to side and thin it out. But I'm trying to learn how to... The hardest thing I've ever done is to learn to tape what I'm doing when I'm thrifting, when I'm shopping. Because I, I'm so enthralled by the shopping part of it that I keep forgetting to move the camera when I'm talking about what I'm looking at. And, oh, it's driving me nuts. Okay, let's put this on here and see if we've got enough. Well, we need a little more. And it's still a little bit thick. Okay. That should do it, and I can add that little. All right, so we're going to center his little, his little lumpy head. And you know, I might smash that down and move it in a little. That's a little bit big. I only need a small little area for the pocket to go in. Is that better? Smash it down even more. And that's what I like about the foil. The foils, I can crank, crank it in the back and it's it's letting me form this. I used to make art dolls and this is, <laughs> this is the form that I would start with. There, that's much better. Make sure it's somewhat even. And I'm going to flatten it across the top where it's going to be flat across the top. There. Now that's pretty good. Let me do this on the side so you can see better. You know that's even... I don't know. 
if that's even a little too big let me get one of these over here and take some of this paper towel out I don't need it to be this big I'm redoing and see this is all I'm doing paper towel inside the foil yeah I think this is going to be much better I just want enough so I can tuck that little tail in there the little tail of the plant and as you can see there's just this little nub here that you need to tuck into something it doesn't have to be that much there we go that's better I'm gonna push that down Too big that way. All right. Now we're going to cut it even with this one, or a tiny bit bigger than this one. So I put the backing on there so I could see where to cut down. And I want it just a little bit bigger than the backing. And as you can see, I don't have a system. I just, the one thing I like about working with the clay is I can do it as I go along. I like to make little houses, little tea light houses. And, and the nice thing about this clay, it's air dry. You don't have to fire it. And uh, I'm going to put this clay in the pouch while I work on this. I need just a little bit of it out for the eyes and the nose and that. Um, this stuff air dries in a day or two, depending on how thick you do your work. And um, you don't have to fire it, which is a blessing. another piece of wet paper towel in there okay that should be enough now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to fix the edge the top edge just use the sponge to smooth it out and it doesn't have to be too smooth because I'm gonna I'm gonna be carving little hair in this so But if I want to smooth it out even better, I'll just cut it off. Mm, wow, listen to that rain. It's very soothing, though. Yeah, I have fingernails. I used to... I used to... I was a potter for like 20 years when I first got out of college and uh, I had my own garage studio and I used to sell my stuff online and I used to love it but I, I always hated to have my hands dirty as strange as that sounds for someone who works in clay but I never had fingernails back then I'm just making little pockets here that I can put these together. Now I'm going to put that. We had it this way. And I'm going to dampen up. Well. And I'm just going to make some little carve marks here where I'm going to be pushing that together. With the underneath piece. I'll really be working it, so it's, I do score and slip sometimes, but with this clay I found it's, it's perfectly okay just to wet it and not worry about the slip. 
make sure I get the right way. Yeah, there it is, right there. All right, I'll put it the side that I scored down. All right, can you see what I'm doing? I'm making a puffy little pillow. I'm lining them up. They don't have to be perfectly lined up because now I'm pushing the top one down into the bottom one. And I'm just forming it right now. Trying to get in the middle of the camera here. All right, now I'm going to take this thing here and press it down. Smooth it out and press it down. Go all the way around. Smoothing it out and pressing it down. I'm not worried about messing up the surface because I haven't even started working on that surface yet. I'm going to do the same thing, push it down. And I can wet the wet this thing. It helps. It helps it to slide. This one doesn't have a serrated edge on it. It smooths it. So I like working with this one. Listen to that rain. Can you hear that? And the thunder? Now I'm just going to make this a little simple kitty. I don't know what I'm going to do for animals. I just wanted some animals. Now I'm going to press it down so up in the top here. I'll smooth it out with some water. And those ears really need help. Now right here there's a little sinking depression I'm going to try and get rid of. If I don't, it's not a tragedy. There we go, that's better. I'm going to try and stay in camera view. Yeah, I'm trying to do those videos while I'm shopping. That's a disaster. I wanted to launch those videos early summer. But I'm still trying to learn how to do it. When I go with my husband, I, I make sure he comes over and tells me, remember the video, remember the video. Because I will even forget, because I just love shopping so much. Especially when I love shopping when it's not for me. Which is why Christmas shopping was always so much fun. I mean, I don't need another thing, but then I find things when I'm shopping, I'm like, ooh, somebody's going to love this. Oh, look, it's an owl. I know I have a lot of people that buy stuff from me that collect owls. So if I find an owl, that's like a squee moment. Or mushrooms, that's the other thing they collect. All right, what do we want to do now? I want to take some of this. See, I didn't even need this snake, so we can use this for something else. I want to put some, work it a little bit, like a little moisture back in it, and let it sit for a minute. Okay. Now, I don't know, I guess it's a kitty. So I need... Well, I need some for the cheeks. Do we want a big nose? We don't want a big nose. And cheeks. All right, let's do a circle for the cheeks. We don't want it to be that big. Just do two little cheeks right there. We'll cut that in half. Nice round circle. We're rolling it on the table. We'll probably
probably could be bigger. Let's do it bigger. Oh, that camera's getting... <laughs> camera doesn't like me doing this. All right. I'm going to clean this off so we can cut it in half. I haven't made a cat sculpture in a long time, so I don't even remember what they look like very much. So it's actually not probably going to be cat cat. Well, I was going to pull those off and score them, but they're already stuck down, so. There's his little cheeks. Say so there's his little nose, but that's quite a big nose. Push it down a little bit. I want the nose to stick above them. The hard part's going to be the eyes, and I need a little bitty mouth down here. Just a bitty one. I guess it would be sort of like that. Get up there, you. Now what I want, see if I get a tool that's rounded. Guess I can use one of these. No, that's too big. Ah. When in doubt, use the end of a pen or a brush or a pencil. That's kind of what I want. There we go. Now these are those rubber tools. These come in handy too. You can use these on it. And I especially like when you wet them down. Now these cheeks, I want to puff out. I don't, I want them attached, but I don't want them like, like I just did with the mouth scored down. And the nose too, I want the nose to stick out. Okay, now I need two eyes right here, there and there. Get another soft piece, come in here. I think I'm going to call it a day after this one because that storm is bad. And I might lose lights any minute. How am I going to tape with no lights? Let's see if I can, I have these cutters, but you really can't get the stuff off after you've cut it. So I'm just going to, oh, those are way too big. I need half that. Let's not do that in front of the camera. The camera doesn't like that. All right, now. I've got my little ball. Let's try it and see if it's going to work before I put it on the CAD. 
We'll cut it in half. Well, I guess that's kind of what I'm looking for. Let's pull this over where we can see. Kind of. All right, let me try and clean it up with some sponge work here. It's got a split in it. It's not going to want to unsplit. Just smoothing it over. Do it to this one too. And I'm just pulling on the corners to get that little cat's eye look. And I'm just going to lay them down gently and see if I like them. Where? Where they should go. And just press them down because they're wet for me working them. So, all right. I'll turn them upside down. Got little marks from my fingernails in them. I can see one thing, turning it upside down, I can see that nose is crooked, so. Work that a little bit. I could do those little nostril things in the nose, but I don't really want to. I kind of want to leave it like that. I'm going to work this, work these eyes in a little bit. I'm going to be careful because I've got to be able to get that foil out. I can pull it out a little at a time once this is thoroughly dry. But you can't get, let it close up so you can't pull it out at all. Then I won't be able to fit my plant in there. As I said, I'm going to do a few more of these. I'll probably do a dog. I think it would be nice to have a little menagerie over the coffee bar. Right now I've got a... Well, I guess it's supposed to be a placemat, but it's from... When we went to Mexico, it's the Day of the Dead. It's uh, got a little skeletal senorita sugar skull. So these little pottery things will go well with my eclectic decor, if you can call it decor. It's more a matter of I like that, so that's going in my house. There. Let me take the sponge and smooth it out a little more. I think that work on the ears is going to be mostly sanding. And that's what you can do when you're done with this. Now I notice the cheeks aren't even. Right now I'm just smoothing everything out. where I can. And I'm going to put a line for the eyes right down the middle. There we go. And I do have to clean the edge up a little, but I think that too will be with more with sanding them. I don't want to mess with too much water on those ears because they'll get weak. We don't want them falling off. Now we have to put holes because if we're going to put this in the wall, so we either need a hole right here. 
I think I'm going to put two holes, one there and one there. And I do have these little hole makers. Oh, what size did I use last time? I think I used the white ones. These are for clay. No, that's too big, the green ones. I'm just going to hang it from a little wire. So we'll do one here. And one here. They're a little off center, but it's not going to kill it. It's not wanting to come up with the whole thing, which it usually does. But that's okay, I can poke them out later. Well, I did with that one. No, well, it's just not wanting to come out. Hmm. I don't know if I can pry it out with this. There we go. I was going to score the hair in it, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to clean up the mess I made poking that hole. I don't think I'm going to. And you can see how the ears are a little off. But I'm going to fix that one. I might put a little bit more in the end of this one. Give me more to carve away later. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about getting them pointed or anything like that right now. Or getting them the right shape because I'm going to sand them into the right shape when I'm done. There. And that is that. Yeah, I was going to carve his... I was going to carve lines for hair, but I think I'm just going to leave these a little plainer. I might even, I have some white clay and some gray clay. I might even come back with on some of them. Probably not this one because I like terracotta, but let's see if I can show you. Let's see, what can I put under it to pick it up? A piece of cardboard. Okay. And find a fat, flat piece of cardboard or something. Oh. Take a piece of this right here. I don't need those taken out anyways. See, I'm never prepared. Just the way I am. But anyhow, I'm probably going to do like a dog and maybe maybe some a rabbit or something. I was thinking of doing a rabbit, like a hopping rabbit. And maybe make him like that fish along where I could put two of the plants in it. Now let me see if I can lift him up with this. So that I can give you a better idea what it looks like. Like I said, the edges will be sanded later. Can you see? He's just a very strange little cat. I have to work on those eyes a bit, a little bit more. But I don't think the storm's going to let me work much longer. So, well, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And these little wall pockets, are I mean, you can make them very simple like that one. Very easy to make. They're fun to make. And they, I love these air plants. I've got like 20 of them now. And they just look cute hanging on the wall. Thank you very much, and you have a lovely day. Put a like if you like my video. Subscribe if you want to see more.
please subscribe if you want to see more. That really helps. And uh, hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when they come up. They usually do twice a week. I don't know if for the next month we're going to be kind of on off and on vacation. So I might be only doing one a week. But after that, the fall is my season for getting work done. I mean, I love working on projects, especially Halloween projects. And so there will probably be more of them for the fall if I... If I move down to one for this month, there'll be more this fall. Thank you very much, and you have a lovely, lovely day.